What is going on, YouTube world? We are KRT Live, KRT Live with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, and everything else. And we just finished literally driving this, what, 2021 G, oh no, not GX. What is this thing called? It's Infinity. Yes. 2021 Infinity QX80. Yes. 400 miles. And now we're going to talk about our initial impressions. Yes. Coming up next. I can't even remember what the car is called. So we're gonna tell you our initial impressions on this pretty good looking truck that is behind us. And if you've seen our old reviews, you know that we kind of like these a little bit. So uh, we got notes and we're gonna make it really short and simple and to the point. Just initial impressions, let's go. All right, so the first one is looks and appearance in and out. So I guess we'll start on the outside. Yes. I think it's a pretty good looking truck. It's black on black, so which is always a win for us. Uh, decent looking wheels because it's just a stock version. There's nothing obviously done to it. Uh, as always, I'm not a big fan of chrome, but that's how most of the companies make them. So as far as like, to me, I feel like the look and appearance of this is very reminiscent of the older model. Uh, still looks really good. Um, I think it actually looks a little bit better, but only marginally better. And uh, yeah, overall, I like the look of the truck. I, it grew on me when we had our first one for almost two or three months. Yes. So the inside, yes. how does the inside look? So to me, the inside looks stellar. I think this is where this car really shines. Everything is black. Everything looks really cool and super high tech. It has these two massive screens that you can use to like do stuff. Very uh, clean looking. Nothing. Very, very clean looking. There's nothing like crazy looking like why did they do that? Everything inside looks really, really good. No chrome inside, which is a massive plus. Mm. Everything is just nice and black. So it blends in with the interior and looks really, really Football. Yes. Seats. The what? Seats. The seats? What are we talking about first? Oh, okay, okay. It's broken down. We sorry. have notes, We, we broke down to the notes. I'm sorry. It's been a long All right. drive. Drivability and functionality. The seats, the size, and the comfort. All right. So the seats are okay, but I feel like the seats on our Land Cruisers are a little bit more comfortable, but the seats look really good. The size of the seats is decent. But I still feel like they're kind of narrow for the size of the actual truck. Because the middle console is wider, let's say, compared to Land Cruiser. So the seats, you yeah. know, took that extra, like, cut off. Where Land Cruiser, the middle console is more narrow, so the seats give you a little bit more option. I feel like for the size of this truck, they definitely could have done a little bit better job to have wider seats, but... Yeah. And then the rear area of the seats, they all fold down and like pretty darn good. And it's really uh, a lot of usable volume in there, as you will see, because we have a bunch of tires back there. Yes, but the rear, like the middle, because it's a three row seating. So the middle row has the actual divider in between. So you don't have an option to have a, a full, one full yeah. size seat. You actually have a middle console in there, which is depends how you use a vehicle. It can be a very nice feature or it can be completely opposite to what you really need. But we still managed to get four really big tires yes. back there. Space, overall space in the truck. We got four huge tires back there. So, so there it has goes. plenty of space. Plenty of space. And the other day we went to dinner, we sat six people in it. Yes, we comfortably sat yeah. six people in it with no issues. And we were able to social distance inside of it. Yes. I thought I found the USB-C port on there, so I thought it was a nice feature considering that most of the devices now come with USB-C ports. Mm -hmm. So definitely a plus. Uh, we, did, when we were, you know, took it on the road trip and we had to put gas in it, we <laughs> struggled with finding gas cap release. I actually had to Google it because yep. there is no lever to pull it and it's not one of those just push it and it pops out. So yeah. how do we... What do we do? So you got to hit the unlock button and then you have to push the tank by your hand to actually make the gas flap open up, which I think is kind of... I think it's simple, but at the same time, it's not my initial like intuitive feature. Like, oh yeah, sure. Let me try to yeah. unlock it so it's going to pop up. Very counterintuitive. I literally had to Google it because I'm like, okay, well, that's not working. But so sunroof, I think the sunroof is tiny bitty considering the size of the vehicle first we don't understand why they didn't put the uh panoramic sunroof but even if they didn't just the regular size of the sunroof should have been wider and bigger 
uh, even our old Land Cruiser has a bigger sunroof. Even yeah. GX, I think, has a bigger sunroof. Yeah. And those so, cars are almost 20 years older than this car. Yeah, so it's kind of surprising to me. I don't understand why would they not do it, but it is what it is. Uh, visibility. So visibility out of this car, I felt was kind of like narrow. It's kind of like the GX visibility, but might even be a lot, a little bit smaller than that. It's kind of like when you look at something in uh, 16 by nine, when you look at, when you, when you do the uh, letter boxing on something, uh -huh. theater mode, that's kind of what it looks like. Now in a Land Cruiser, you get a lot of visibility. Like the, you know, the windshields are huge and a G-Wagon also like tons of visibility. This one, the visibility is a little bit limited, but you can kind of tell by the design of the car. Yes. You can see how small the windows are. You can actually feel it when you're driving. Because so. I feel like when I sat in it and I was driving, I sat just as high as I would in the Land Cruiser, higher than in GX. But because of the side windows were more narrow, it felt like, yeah, it wasn't enough. But mm -hmm. anyway, uh, now the drivability part. Okay, so now when you're driving this thing, so when you're driving it down the road, and the same problem that I had with the other one that we had last year or it two was years Nissan ago. Armada, I think yes. we had? And it's the same thing with this one. When you hit a bump or when you hit like uh, bridges and stuff, it feels like the back of the car does like Wobbles. this. It's like fish tails and it feels like it's swimming to the water, which can be almost terrifying. And I don't know why they haven't fixed that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of strange. I didn't drive it on the interstate before we put the tire, so I didn't experience it because on the way back I was driving and we had those massive tires in the back. So I think I had a lot more weight to press it down. So it was a nice, comfortable ride for me. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, suspension. Uh, and then like the suspension, the suspension on its own. I mean, it just doesn't feel very uh i guess like uh comfortable and like cushy like a land cruiser suspension does and so our range rover i mean even some i think like a g-wagon probably drives a little bit better than this so, so the suspension leaves uh much to be desired yeah so and then we we'll talk about engine so engine doesn't feel super powerful it's just no. sufficient enough if uh, a couple of times i had to step on gas so i can merge and cut you know like um get myself in the proper position and I felt like it was a little bit struggling. Yeah. So, but I'm assuming it's kind of like a almost bigger size uh, soccer mom vehicle and not meant to have that massive power, you know, yeah. that you can go. So, yeah, I guess that's how it's designed. I'm not really sure what transmission they have made it to this uh, V8 engine, but whatever they have connected to it, it ain't really working that good. Like it's cool. But you could definitely feel that this in uh, this car leaves much to be desired when it comes to power delivery and acceleration and all that kind of stuff. Like I really honestly feel like my 20 year old uh, Land Cruiser, it drives better than this thing, like honestly. Yeah, so the road noise. Uh, so road noise. The road noise, as well, so we got a helicopter going over our heads. I don't know if it's gonna be drowned out. Hold on, I'll wait for it to go. And, City uh, living, you guys? Yeah, that's how I be in the city. Helicopters, trains, oh my. Anything. Anything. All right, so road noise. Um, I think that with the road noise, it's okay. Like, you know, the road, the level, and we're used to driving our GX with a, a BFG KO2s on it and a roof nest tent on it and all that other stuff. And I think it was marginal compared to the GX. Like, it wasn't like, oh my God, this is super quiet. I and mean, we've driven Rolls Royces and stuff like that that are like super quiet. Uh, this is not. This is just. It's not SUV. noisy. It's just like a normal yeah. SUV. Nothing special. You won't be like, oh my god, this is like so quiet and so like driving a Tesla or something. How super quiet? This no, is not like that. that's definitely not a Tesla quiet yeah. for sure. And then I guess the last thing we have on our list is the headlights. Yes, the headlights are awesome, and that is one thing that I think uh, when it comes to like uh, uh, modern vehicles versus older vehicles. The headlight technology is one thing that is like so much better. And it's one thing that I really, really like about this car. Now other like, you know, options and features in cars, like you can have an old vehicle and put a new radio in it and add a lot of the uh, uh, newer features. But headlight technology is so good on these modern cars. Like when we were driving it the other night, the cutoff and the distance and how clear everything was, I mean, it was just amazing. Yes, and then especially for us because we obviously take lots of road trips. Most of the time we drive at night if we take in a long road trip. So for us, the headlights is definitely a massive 
plus and must have. Mm -hmm. So anything else we want to add? Because that's the end of our notes. <laughs> so to but, me, the question that I had to myself while we were driving this car to go run some errands today was, if you had a choice between driving uh, or purchasing this right here for how much does this thing cost? So this costs sixty nine thousand. For sixty nine thousand dollars. Starts at sixty. If you could go buy this for sixty nine thousand dollars, or a brand new Land Cruiser for eighty five thousand dollars, or an old GX for about ten thousand dollars, or old Land Cruiser, or old Land Cruiser for about ten thousand dollars, which one should you choose? And honestly, because we drive all of those vehicles a lot. Yeah. I would get an old Land Cruiser before I bought this thing all day long. Yeah, I think we could get a nice old, like in a good condition Land Cruiser, put in like, you know, fancy radio, make some upgrades, obviously, but it would not be upgraded to pay $70,000. Yeah. And I think it would be just as good, if not any better. Yeah, I think the only thing you'd be missing is the fancy lights. Literally, that's the only thing. So that's our general impressions of the 2021 QX80. I don't know why I couldn't remember that name. We are KRT Life. KRT Life with the Y. Like, subscribe, comment, all that kind of stuff. Is there anything else that we want to say about this car before we finish this vlog? Uh, I don't know, but if we do, we're going to place it in the comments and pin it on the top so you guys can see if we uh, forgot something to mention in this actual video. Yes, but we still like this car. Yeah, it was a very nice ride. I can't say anything. It was comfortable. But the patrol is better. All right, y'all. Peace. <laughs> Thank you.